Before you start removing the waste containers, will the closure caps be removed from the filter vent components so that the barrels can be vented before they will be removed? Yeah, I'm not sure I understood that. <laughs> Before you start removing the waste containers, will the closure caps be removed from the filter vent components so that the barrel can be vented before they will be moved? That's right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was already answered. Yeah, it's uh, right. Yeah, we're not planning to remove any. What prompted the need for the second hygienist? Um, I'm trying to remember. I believe one of our hygienists, and I don't want to get this wrong, I believe they're either retiring or they're going to another position. So it's just normal attrition. We uh, how were the drums monitored before? How were they monitored? How were they monitored before? In the underground, or? Yes. How were they monitored? So, okay, once there is, I'm making an assumption here. So I'm going to assume that how are they monitored after they're placed in the underground? Okay. In each one of the panels, there's a continuous air monitor. So in panel seven, I'll use that as a, the example. There's a continuous air monitor that's on the exhaust side of the panel. And the airflow is in that direction. Excuse me. And so we monitor them through that continuous air monitor. And that's actually what triggered us to this event. It indicated it had high indication, which then um, triggered the ventilation system to go into filtration mode. So that was the initial indicator. And based on the fact that it is located to give us that indication, that was the function it performed to let us know that we had an abnormal condition. Thank you, Tammy. Is there anybody else in the audience that has any questions? I think we've about exhausted everything we have online. And Tammy's losing her voice because she's been talking a lot today. <laughs> she went through a couple of meetings. One thing I would like to do, one more question. Hello, one question. Uh, you what is that new exhaust system? You have to have this. Okay. The new exhaust system, when is that going to start? When know, is this, this, the new exhaust system? that you're going to put, uh, you the, talked about? The new ventilation yeah. system? Um, when is it going to start? Yeah, in construction. Well, the project, um, we're pulling together the preliminary documents for the project now. This is what's called a capital project. And so there's um, different phases of the project, and we're into the initial phase now. It's what you call a mission need statement. So that's being developed now, and then we'll provide that to um, CBFO, and then that will have to go through DOE for approval. So it's going to be years rather than months, right? It would be more than a year. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anybody else? Mary Scowan. What is, this may be for you more than anybody, I think. What's going on with the waste up in Los Alamos? I've heard that 100-some people have been let go and... Are we just going to wait for WIP to open again? Just let it sit there? Are we going to repeat? What are we doing with it? Okay, so what's going on in Los Alamos? I mean, like we said, um, the investigation's going on up at Los Alamos. Um, the um, activities um, have been, there's still some activities that are, that are still w being worked on with the uh, contractor and the DOE up there. And like here, the DOE has multiple contractors doing different things. And the contractor has subcontractors doing multiple things. And as work gets completed, uh, they do, uh, you know, is they, they look at uh, the workforce and see if it's still needed or the contract's complete, that workforce leaves. Um, the, what, what they're doing with the workforce up at Los Alamos, you, we'll have to ask them. Um, I can't tell you exactly all the details that they're working through and, and what their contracts, because it also depends on what type of contract was uh, put together. What were the terms and conditions and all of that kind of stuff. So. Um, they are working through some of that. I do talk to their DOE person up there uh, quite frequently. And as a matter of fact, he was down here for one of our meetings, uh, Pete Majori. And, uh, but uh, 
I know that they're working through some of those uh, things right now. So um, they, they will continue to make sure that their people are proficient. Uh, we have some staff up there that are also staying proficient, working through and, and making sure that they're helping with any of the um, work that's needed for the other sets of drums. There, there's, there's various stage, different types of drums up there or, or um, waste categories, what we call summary category groups. You have an S3000, which means it's a sol solid, and an S4000 and an S5000, which is like debris and gravels as S4000. But all of that is part of the, um, that, that what we had the issue with was the S3000. So they're still looking at the other waste streams and, and folks are still working to some of that. Not, not you know, not a, I, not a direct answer because you, you, you got to ask them, uh, ask the DOE up there and also their contractor. How they're doing. I read the paper too and saw that. But. Okay, we have any other questions? Okay, Mary. Uh, Tammy, these uh, bulkheads, uh, they, re they have restricted air. They're not sealed. Are, th are these rooms ever going to be completely sealed with no airflow? So um, for the most part, there's no airflow once we do the initial closure. But you're right, there is the potential because they're not 100% sealed. Um, the final closure, however, you know, that would be a more permanent um, sealing there. But airflow, because you're sealing the front end of the panel and you're sealing the back end of the panel, so effectively you have no airflow at that point. Anybody else? Oh, okay, sorry. All right, so I just, if we're ready to close, I, I had a couple of things I wanted to make sure I clarified. One is, uh, um, you, you know, Tammy talked about the drone. We used the drone and it blew a lot of air and um, created a lot of dust. And, and the MGO is the magnesium oxide and we've talked about that before. Uh, we also tried um, uh, kind of a blimp. You know, they, they kind of float around and, and it's easier and it doesn't stir up as much things. But we found that that was a difficult uh, item to use because uh, it, it can't carry a lot of weight. So the camera had to be something that was real thin, simple, easy, and 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 then it it was um, a lot of the currents in the airflow would cause it to change um, direction, and so you'd have to try to steer it with either some kind of line, whether it's fishing line or a little cable or something. And, and when they were pull on, on something as they were testing it, it would dip down and so the camera would now no longer be looking at the waste. And so that was another technology that was looked at that people had suggested and it didn't work real well. Um, then the, the other thing that I wanna clarify is, Tammy talked about the panel uh, closure and there was that question. When, if you look at the uh, New Mexico administrative order and what we submitted, um, that's, that's still being reviewed by the state and we will work with the state. They, they'll have a final say so on, on what it is that they uh, believe should be uh, the closure path uh, way. And we'll work with them and, and make sure that we are all in sync with and make sure that we can get this uh, uh, closure done. But the initial one that Tammy was talking about uh, provides what we call a substantial barrier uh, for that area. But we still have, uh, part of the whole process would be that we go and we put that run of mine salt about 100 feet of it, and then we put another wall. And so there's this, this huge uh, amount of, uh, of um, uh, run of mine salt plus uh, different bulkheads uh, walls that would go up. And that would be our substantial barrier. And then uh, the final closure of the mine then also gets evaluated on how we're gonna do the final closure of the whole uh, section there for the WIT facility. So uh, that would be part of the, the whole um, review that's going on with the state. They're looking at the, the current um, high risk areas for us right now, which is the room seven, panel seven, and uh, panel six. And so as we get through, we'll do a substantial barrier. And if the state wants us to do something different, we'll work with them and see what, what it is that we can do there. Okay. So that was uh, all I had, Donald. 
I just wanted to make a notation of something that uh, we say goodbye to a colleague today that's been with the project for 30 years. Uh, Bob Kerman, many of you know, know a lot of folks online also know him. He's been with the company also for 44 years. Uh, he's been instrumental in so many things we've done with the project. So I just want to, uh, you know, just let everybody know. And if, if you know Bob, you know, he'll be back. We know he's going to do some things. But I uh, just want to note that. Uh, next meeting, July 24th, right, Mary? July 24th. So just tune on that. That's it for tonight. Thank you.